Okay, we are going to go ahead and get start, started. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, you're here for our Character Area 1 Papago North Tempe uh, public meetings, where we are going to be presenting a draft plan, which we're very excited about. Um, my name is Shauna Warner, and I'm with the Neighborhood Services Office. We'll have our other city staff introduce themselves as we move along, but I just wanted to point out a couple of virtual meeting reminders here. Uh, we are recording so we can make it available for playback on our project website. So we just ask that you do remain muted with your videos off during the presentation. Um, just that helps with the recording that we can post, but then afterwards we'll have plenty of time for uh, questions and answers, for discussion. And at that point, um, you're welcome to mute, unmute yourselves um, as you have questions or wanted to contribute to the conversation. Si quieres, puedes mandar preguntas en español por el chat. So again, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm going to turn it over to Ambika now for our presentation. Ambika. Sana, thank you so much. Good afternoon. Sana, my audio is okay? Yes, you sound great. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it's showing a little unstable internet. Uh, Ravi, in case something happens to the internet, you are the backup. Uh, my name is Ambika Adhikari, um, Principal Planner with the Community Development, and we are a whole team here, Sana Warner, Brenda Clark, and my colleague, Ravi Aran. We also have a couple other city staff, so towards the end, if you have any questions, we can discuss that. This is going to be a short presentation because the main idea is for you to ask to review the draft plan that we have and see if you have any input today or at least lead you to the draft plan so that you can provide the input. The agenda today is a basic introduction to character area planning for anyone who is new, and then I'll be very brief on that. And then we've been having a lots of meetings and public outreach. We will talk very briefly about the outcomes of those meetings. Again, those will be kind of brief. The most important one is the agenda number three, which is the draft plan content and examples. We'll go over that plan, which is about 42 pages long. The actual content is about 30 pages. We'll go over some of the items of that plan so that it's easier for you to refresh and give, either provide us any comments or think about it and come back to us later on. Uh, we will also give you a timeline and then at the end, we'll have a discussion. This is the branding of the character area one, Papago North Tempe. The website address at the bottom is the important one characterareas.tempe.gov. That's where you find the draft plan. And one of us will also put it on the chat so that you can click and see the draft plan. You can also look at all the summaries of the previous meetings. You can also participate on the survey, which is open right now. I'll talk a little bit about that later on, on that site. Now, for those of you who are a little new to this area, very briefly, a character area plan is more of a high level vision than policy level plan. It's not regulatory. This is something that is designed to advance the goals and objectives of the general plan and also the council priorities of city of Tempe. The vision is crafted through the input from the community and stakeholders and based on the previous area plans and also what is described in the general plan. The character defining elements are reviewed for any area and they include the aesthetics, the different typology of the land use, the mental image that we make of a particular place, you know, the vision that we have of any place defined by the different aesthetics and different elements. Most importantly, the character area plans have design goals and principles, which is the bulk of this particular document. There are 15 different elements where we define those principles and actually provide and enumerate those principles that will be used by the community, by the city, by the developers to uh, create any plans that are um, The planning process is participatory. We've been having a number of meetings on this one, and this is one of those. Um, there are altogether eight character area plans in the city, as you can see in the map. The solid colors, three, four, five, seven, and eight, those plans already have been prepared and adopted. The uh, gray hats, number two and six, 
those are the two plants we'll do in future. The one on top with the orange hatching number one is what we're talking about today. On the right side of the slide, you see the character area one boundary. That's all of the city boundary that is north of the loop 202 freeway. Very briefly, the geographical extent of the character area plan. One, it has about 3.35 square mile of area, which comes out to about 8.5% of the citywide geographic area. The population, according to 2020 census, is slightly less than 10,000. And then the other indicators, number of housing units and everything is pretty proportional to what is in the city of Tempe, except that the median household income is slightly less than the average income. Now the planning status as of now, we started the process on March 15th. So it's been about six months and we held two kickoff meetings. Subsequently, we uh, put the survey online uh, and then the survey was to determine what kind of elements are important for the public and the residents. Then two public meetings on May 11, followed by a survey and autocracy, two in-person meetings on June 14th and 26th at Papago Park, two focus group meetings, one with the nonprofits and one with the business community interested in the area. Then the survey, and we'll go over some of the results of that survey, the autocracy survey that was open for six weeks from May 11 to June 30. We've also been making a round of all, all the city of Tempe boards and commissions. We've completed 10, and then we've gone a second time to neighborhood advisory committee. Uh, that is uh, the 11th one. And this evening we go to HPC for the second time, the historic preservation commission that will make it 12 presentation. The draft plan that hopefully you would have seen was made public late last month. And it is on the website that I described and the comment period is until September 19. A quick review of the outcomes of the previous meetings. The first survey we asked, what kind of amenities and enhancement would you like to see in Papago North Tempe? And the, uh, uh, it was pretty well responded to, 91 survey responses were received. And we did get these different types of land use and amenities, uh, starting from canal side trails, multi-use paths, park enhancement, and historic preservation. Uh, we also had um, opportunity for provided for writing comments, and people spoke about better security, signage, the uh, enhancement of the running trails. Uh, there were actually seven questions on that survey, so I'm only give you an example of the two questions. The question number two was, what are the land uses you would like to see enhanced or increased? And not surprisingly, vast majority of those respondents uh, spoke about the open space, residential land use, commercial office, and then people also wrote in that they would like to see the county island in the area annexed, and then also focus on several other uh, ideas like the mixed use developments to increase walkability. The public outreach has been very extensive. Many of you probably have received the postcards from Sona's office and emails and Facebook and next door. Here is an example of the two postcards that we send first time on the March 15th meeting and the second time for the in-person meetings on June 14th and 26th. The outreach was also increased because of the social media uh, here is a quick overview of how wide and extensive the outreach has been through Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor, and emails. Um, when we did the dotocracy, which is providing you the dots to vote for the principles, so democracy for dot, we also provided online, also in person, and also videos, some of the visuals of what we meant by those different elements that you we wanted you to vote on. And those included things like shade and streetscape and connectivity. They were all described in one paragraph and some images were provided. More examples, more examples, more examples. That completes those 16 different elements. And on the dotocracy, a quick overview of the responses. Uh, it was very well responded. 160 people responded to the survey. The general response was more on the state extreme heat management, as you can see the graph 
all the way to the quality design that we had listed. There were 17 principles we wanted people to vote on, on how they felt about it, uh, just the way that I was showing those previous slides. And we also went to the youth group. We went to the Laird Elementary School where 60 respondents participated on the same survey. And they also gave us their ideas on what was important to them. The extreme heat management, climate change, and many of the more environmental issues were, were uh, on the top of the list, but people voted for all the different elements. Now, the main topic today is the draft plan content. The plan that you have seen or you can see on the website has different sections. Like I said, the actual content of the plan is about 30 pages, but there's also a cover page, the back page, and some appendices and several images, images uh, altogether 42 pages. The plan contains introduction, describes the purpose of the plan and the existing character, and then discusses how the public involvement and the input from the public was an important component of crafting the plan. And initially we started with 17 elements. The plan actually has 15 elements because we combined some of those together. And there's also a section in the appendices. The, uh, just one example of when we begin to describe the plan in the draft, uh, there's a character defining element and historic resources section, maybe about one and a half pages, talks about all the important historic resources in the area. And there's also a map that you see on the right side of the slide. The pink and red color shows the cultural resources areas, the stars and the triangle shows the historic property. So that map is in the draft. Then the draft plan has a number of visuals that the staff has gone around and taken pictures of the area. Once again, to define the character, to capture the visual character and how it seems to you when you go around. And the plan has more of these images. Out of those 17 elements we started with for the design principles, the plan combines them and makes them 15 different elements all the way from dividing the area into four sub areas to discussing historic preservation, neighborhood characters, walkability, all the way to public health friendly planning. Each one of them in average is maybe about a page of discussion, a preamble, the goals, and then listing of what principles we would like any new development to fit. Uh, the examples of those 15s, here is one for the public art. Essentially, there's a preamble and then there's a listing of the principles. So the public art preamble would say, what do we mean by the public art? What are the important elements? And what are the principles that we propose? And the design principles are provided not only in the draft text, we've also provided some visuals and what we mean by each one of them. In this example, for example, you see when we talk about green roof and walls, there's a whole one page sections. There are also images on how we envision that. These images are the best practices from the Valley, mostly from Tempe, but sometimes from the Valley because things are pretty similar. What we mean by shaded walkways, for example, and what we mean by the variation of colors. Now we have at least two questions for you. If you have looked at the draft, what do you like? Um, how do you like the draft plan? And do you have any suggestions on the draft plan? If you haven't, we invite you to read and take a look at the draft plan. Either send us an email, put anything on the chat box, write to us, call us, or go to the survey that is online. So you can think about it. I will we'll have a few minutes towards the end of the uh, presentation that we can talk about it. What is your opinion about this draft plan if you have looked at it? And then what kind of suggestions you have? At least those two questions or any other comments that you might have. Now, very quickly, what are our next steps? So like I mentioned, all these presentations to the boards and commissions and focus groups have been completed. And we started on March 15th. The planning process is ongoing. Several meetings we have held. And this summer we've been going around the boards and commissions and also the outreach of which this is a part. Then all of this fall and winter, 
we will continue to get input for the draft plan and then we'll continue to have any any meetings that people want to have with us and then also any review from the boards and commissions and continue to work on the draft plan and once we get uh, uh, reasonably comfortable on including the input and addressing the input from everyone we want to take it to the city council we want to take it to them by november december for their decision and in case there are many many comments from the public we will probably do very early probably february or january of 2022 that is our schedule just a couple more months and uh, here, are, here is the core team that you can reach us, myself, Ravi Aran, Sana Warner, Brenda Clark. There's also a phone number and email on the website when you go to the characteria.tempi.gov. I deliberately wanted to make this presentation very brief. So in case there are any questions or discussions, we can uh, address that. Uh, Sana, I am done and thank you everyone. Okay, thank you, Ampika. So I see a few of you have found the chat. So thank you. We'll take questions there. Um, for those of you uh, who may not be as familiar with Zoom, if you want to ask questions in the chat, you can, if you're on a desktop or laptop, you hover over your name and there'll be a raise hand button on the right hand side if you want to do it that way. Um, if you want to speak, we'll call on you as well. Or if you're on a mobile, you click on the chat bubble and then that allows you to see the raise hand button. Um, but so either way, we're going to go with the questions we have in the chat, and then we will go through and take any um, who are raising their hand. So Ambika, the first uh, question was just more asking about more information about the focus groups. So I didn't know if you wanted to speak to some of that um, and or we can add some more additional information on the website. Um, Shona, if it is about the composition of the focus group, you can probably go ahead and describe or I can add. Um, if you want to go ahead, Ambika. Yeah, yeah. Or... So we we spoke with two focus groups. Uh, that was, I think, on, um, was it June 29th, I suppose. So one was we sent out a note that we wanted to discuss with everyone with the nonprofit community that was interested in character one, many people from Tempe. And I think we had a reasonable representation, about five or seven of those. And we wanted to see from their perspective, what did they think were important issues for the character area. And then because by that time, we already had some meetings and we had a list of those 17 different principles. We also sought their input if this is something that uh, reflected their point of view. And we got some good, healthy uh, discussions and the input. And on the same day, we also held a focus group meetings with the business community. We invited many. And again, I think six or seven people participated and we gave them an opportunity to provide their input. And it was not only during the meeting, they could also send us uh, any comments on the back. We did uh, hear back from them. The idea was we go to public, mostly to the residents, and then we go to any interested person in the city and I think the business community and the nonprofit communities were very important. So that was the idea. Yeah, you want to add anything, Sona? Uh, no, I think that covered it. Just okay. maybe for everyone's information, every time we do these meetings, we do reach out to all of our residents, businesses, uh, nonprofits, as well as property owners that are fall within that mapped area. So they do get that invite. And so uh, they are also invited to participate in the larger public process. Um, so then we have a comment here uh, and someone who agreed, but just that more emphasis needs to be made in the plan on how we are the Northern Gateway into the city of Tempe. So Ambika, I don't know if you want to reply to that or add any comments or obviously anything in the back? chat will be noting in. Can you read that back? Was it about the sure. entrance? More emphasis needs to be made in the plan on how we are the northern gateway into the city of Tempe. Oh, so this okay. character so, area is how, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We did have quite a bit of discussions on that on previous meetings. There were some good inputs that were received both through the survey and also in public that they wanted some kind of gateway feature and also some sort of visual cue that we are entering the city and we're entering the character area one. And upon discussion, um, people felt that it's not only on the Northern Gateway, but probably some other areas 
also needed that kind of definition. So the draft plan does address it a little bit. It does say that through arts and then landscaping, color, maybe even signage on some points, the Northern area, the Roosevelt and the Scottsdale point, and then a couple other points where the different sections of the character area plan I enter, we can probably do some kind of gateway in the art feature. There's a discussion uh, about that in the plan. And if there are anything else that you would like to propose, that's something we can address and contemplate even more in the plan. Okay, Ambika, next question is asking how much of the character area wishes weighted in city projects? How much of the character area? Yeah, how much are the wishes weighted in city projects? Uh, is it is the question asking on what the city itself does, like the roads and medians and infrastructure? How do we use the principles in the character plan? Is that the questions you think? Um, it doesn't specify, but if you want to maybe just for everyone's benefit, speak to how that works, not just with cities personal projects, but also private development. Yes. I think that would be helpful for people to know how the once the character area plan is adopted, what that looks like. Absolutely, Sana. Thank you so much for that clarification. So as I described in the beginning, the character area plan is basically the intent is to uh, provide guidelines, the design and planning guidelines for anything, including the cities on investment, cities on plan, in transportation, in landscaping, in maintenance and in parks and also the private developers and the architects who propose any new development in the area. Because we, the idea of the character area plan is to provide those principles so that anything that we do that's new or maintain uh, the area is consistent with what is already there and what is liked by, this, by the residents. So the character area plan is a very important reference, although it is a policy level document, the city council, the different boards and commissions like the Development Review Commission and the staff take it very seriously to assess anything that is submitted to the city to see that the character area planning, uh, the plan elements are, are uh, reflected. Uh, if we talk something, for example, about certain types of shade and the types of landscaping, then anything we do through the city or anything that the private developers propose we want to make sure that that follows what is in the character area plan. So it's a very important document from our own perspective and also for the community and also for the developers. For the community, it's their plan. Yeah, Sana. Thank you. So we're going to take a hand raise from David. If you wanted to ask your question, then we'll come back to the chat. Hi, everyone. I wanted to um, expand on what you guys were talking about with the gateway in, in North Tempe and some of the other elements of the plan, like for example, um, I was reading about the public art and it talks about um, water and light and kinetic features. And I thought that that was really interesting, but overall it kind of gets lost in the plan. Um, we like, we want all of Tempe to have public art, right? We want all of Tempe to, to have public art, to be walkable, to have shade. We want it to be sustainable. Those are elements that I would expect to see in all of Tempe. So maybe if this plan could put particular emphasis on those elements, you know, the gateway, the what type of public art we want to see, and really, you know, maybe, I don't know, put a star next to it or highlight it or a box or just something that really draws it out of the plan. So that way it really puts more emphasis on it. Does that make sense? Thank you for that question. Um, you are right. Some of the elements are very common throughout the city. Um, for different character areas. And then also for this kind of policy level plan to be very specific, it can be a little complicated. So sometimes it is provided in some level of generality, but your question is very important. If there's something specific, obviously we have maintained, we have written there that the public art or any other future has to reflect the history and the cultural resources of the area, or the character of the area, those are left like that so that, you know, planning and designing is sometimes a little open-ended. So we can review it from that perspective rather than very being very restrictive. 
So there are two elements. One is we already have an ordinance, public art and development. So that has to be followed. That goes without saying throughout the city of Tempe. But for this particular area, we have put forward some general principles. But if you have some specific suggestions on the shape or likeness or you know, some kind of color, anything that is historically more relevant, uh, we will be very, very happy to discuss that. And maybe we can put some of those things a little more in the generalized way in the plan. So that's something we can, we are very open-minded about uh, hearing all of that. That's a, that's a good comment. Thank you. And also just so everyone knows, um, and Ambika or Robbie could add more to this, but anything that's brought up through the course of these public meetings that might, or even during the process for the plan that don't necessarily, not saying that this doesn't, uh, Gateway doesn't relate to the plan, but other items, we do make sure that those get to the different departments in the city um, and or all of the comments that we receive will be shared. So um, certainly what you're speaking there to David can also be shared um, with our public art office, as well as just uh, the city in general about the need for some gateway and more emphasis on that. And then Deborah, I know you had a question in the chat here. Um, and I think that was kind of put in as Brenda was answering you in the chat. So uh, let us know if you needed more details, but um, she had replied in writing above that. Uh, and just for everyone's benefit as well, part of the draft plan, the appendices will be all of the comments that were received um, and any notes from any of the meetings. And so those will be added as we're moving the draft forward. And then let's see. So there was a question here from Lane who wanted to know uh, what the city was going to do to activate the parks up here. So example, lighting and policing. So Ambika, if you want to speak a little bit to that, but then um, like I had shared Lane, anything that comes up during these will be shared with those uh, relevant departments and divisions that might be doing some of the actual uh, then working on city property or additional things with the parks. Ambika, did you want to say anything to that? Yeah, exactly, Sana. Thank you. Thank you so much for clarifying that because this particular plan is more visual design oriented character area plan. So it doesn't really, it cannot tackle all the issues and questions. But we are all very happy to hear. I know you have issues related to arts and traffic and crime. So we have made a list of all those different elements and different questions and we have shared with different departments. I think some of the departments are probably present even today. We do that as a matter of the process. So anything related to traffic, homelessness, we've been sharing with our appropriate departments and with the plan also. The planning process also involves consultation internally with different uh, city departments. So we do uh, deal with that. On the parks, as you know, the Park master plan was just uh, recently adopted and we have made a reference to that park master plan in the draft plan. Anything that needs to be done in a little more detail, we go to the parks and recreation board uh, to tackle that. But in general, from the aesthetic side, we have written something in the, in the draft plan on how we would like the park, the multi-use trails, different type of landscaping and the visual, the view sets, for example, to be all protected. So that's the extent of uh, those plans we've done. But uh, this is a cooperative process within the city and also outside. So we do take your comments and then share anything that can be addressed in the design we do. Anything that is outside, we do share it with other departments. Uh, Sona, Robby, if you guys want to add anything, you're, you're welcome. Otherwise, I did can... put a link to that park plan in the chat for everyone too, if you haven't seen it, because that does get more specific. Okay, and good next question is, why is the county island referenced at the beginning of the plan? It needs to be mentioned, but it is in the forefront. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Um, there were many inputs that we received in the initial meeting. People spoke about the County Island, people said that should be annexed, that's important, that's an ISO, the kind of uses out there are not very inspiring to the character area. So we wanted to address that. It is not exactly because we don't have a jurisdiction within the county lands, 
but we did make a mention out there that we do like to see that annexed if the landowner so choose because we cannot do that ourselves. That was the idea of putting that in the introduction because so many people asked that question and provided that comments, but we hear you, uh, we, can, we can somehow write the language in such a way that it's mentioned for the reference on what could potentially be an opportunity, but it cannot be totally a part of the plan because we cannot really dictate anything that goes in the county island at this point. So that was the idea. We try to write it like that, but we can revisit and then see how we can help address your, your concerns. Okay, so right now I don't see any more questions in the chat or hands raised. Uh, now is your opportunity. If you had any questions or general comments you wanted to share with everyone, we're happy to take those now. Um, and as Ambika mentioned, um, the plan is online for comment as well as we'll keep everyone updated like we have as it moves forward through uh, the process. So if you have any other questions, oh wait, here's one coming in. But um, please feel free to keep adding those. We have about a half hour more here. Okay, so um, Ambika, on this one, the, the question or comment is that they're still reading through the plan, but don't recall being asked about architectural styles. Um, it sounded like that was something you were interested in input on from some of your comments. Uh, she loves the mid-century modern style of the Roadrunner Apartments on McDowell and 68th. Most of the homes in the area were constructed 1958 to 65. And this style is having a renaissance. I'd love to see new infill developments to respect the mid-century aesthetic. So that was kind of more of a comment. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to architectural styles or how the plan might um, relate. That's a very, very important and interesting comment. We, in the draft plan in general, we may not go to that level of you know, defining the architectural style, except that in the historic side, the historic preservation section, we can talk about what, what, what exists uh, and what defines that character. We can, we can do that. And based on a particular location, we've also got a section on the historic preservation that any extension of the building that are kind of adjacent to the historic properties has to somewhat match the proportion and the type of the design that are next to it. There are some principles like that, but uh, we will take that uh, comment and see how we can maybe incorporate, you know, slightly different version of that into the character area plan. Anything else, Sona? Um, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, we are happy to hang out here for a few minutes. If anyone has anything else that's uh, on their mind that they wanted to share with us. Otherwise, they can always get back to us. Online. Yeah, they can always get back to us online, by email, by phone, or they can take the survey and then, you know, write us any comments through the website. And then Sona, they know where to find the draft, right? Uh, correct. I put the link in the chat as well as the email and phone number. Uh, David, I see your hand is up if you want to go ahead and speak. Um, yeah, I was just curious. I saw that there was something about using the alleyways. I think it said something about creative parking solutions or I was just curious if there's any more details on that or maybe what the challenges are with that because I was actually interested in using the alleyways maybe like for native landscaping and, and natural walkways and so I was just curious about you know, with the, with the garbage there and, and the other, you know, the city uses that, right? So I'm just curious if there are any challenges with that. I can, I can respond to that a little bit and maybe Robbie or someone can jump in if you like. There's a little bit of discussion in the plan, like you said, about the alleyways. Uh, unlike really a downtown type of situation, this is, you know, semi-suburban area and there are only a few places where there are alleys. In general, we have asked that the alleys could be treated as good connection um, resources and also any good treatment that uh, we might be able to do. And we've also put some principles on like big block development where the alleys and the internal pathways should be expanded. 
but uh, you're right. I mean, you spoke about it a little bit. A lot of it is up to the municipal utility sections. Uh, they are used to pick up the garbage. And so this is something that we need to coordinate it with them. But more and more, whenever it's feasible, we do like to have the alleys as more aesthetically planned and designed. Uh, that is something that I think the city is pretty conscious of. Ravi, you want to add anything if you like? Okay. Yep. So now I think that's it from our side. Okay, and then Kim, we see that you had a question that was more just a, so we'll ask Shelly if she wants to stay on, if she's listening, she can either um, reply or we can get that rep response to you at a later time. I'm not sure by Scottsdale Road. I don't know if you want to unmute yourself. I know we'll be starting a, a project a little bit later with transportation. Yeah. Was it um, or are you talking about transit or kind of, there's a lot going on with Scottsdale. <laughs> It sounds like, and I, I'm just guessing that they're speaking of the Scottsdale Road streetscape project, and that is um, making its way through design. I apologize um, with the interim position. I haven't had as much, um, I haven't been able to keep um, up with that project as much, but we can certainly um, provide an update on that um, to whoever is interested. It looks like Kim and Deborah both uh, commented on that. So Sean, I might ask for your help in reaching out to Robert, who probably has a better idea than I do. Absolutely. And we can, um, on the character area page as well, maybe make some links to current projects in the area um, as we get a better idea of the schedule and what's happening with that project. Great idea. And as projects go along, um, you know, just for everyone's information outside the character area, you know, we will have that project website and ability to give information on what some of those specific projects that'll happen as we go along in the area. And it does say, um, and we will make note of that, that it should be included in the draft. I know uh, some of the Linkages Ambika was speaking to and connectivity is referenced, but uh, we could certainly double check in there on, on the importance of Scottsdale Road and what some of that redesign might look like. All right, otherwise, um, I think we are good right now, Ambika. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks, everyone. Feel, please feel free to write to us or call us. We have the screen. You can also go to the website. Thank you, Sana. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, everyone.